In this video, we're going to look at balancing simple redox reactions, and we're concerned with two different types um, for the most part. There, are, there could be some other examples, for, but for the most part, these are going to involve either displacement reactions or combination reactions. The, the textbook does a really good job of talking about the different types of reactions, so you should read those sections, but we don't actually go over them in lecture. So to harp on the word simple, uh, this means that we're talking about monatomic the monatomic case. So we're going to be talking about monatomic ions. Uh, we're not going to be dealing with polyatomic ions. So let's start with a simple example where we react copper solid with silver nitrate to make silver solid plus copper nitrate. And our job now is to balance this reaction. So there are a couple of steps that you're going to follow to help you out with balancing. And if you follow these steps, generally speaking, this is going to get you right through to the answer in a very efficient way. So the first step, as always, and I introduced this before, so step one is write the net ionic. And the reason why, is, the reason why we do this is this is going to help to get rid of the spectator ions so that we're not spending a lot of time coming up with um, oxidation numbers for things we don't need to. So in this case, the spectator ion is going to be the nitrate. So we can we can eliminate that from our reaction. And if you wanted to be pedantic, you could write copper solid plus Ag plus NO3 um, goes to silver solid plus copper plus two NO3 minus. And you're gonna see that the spectator is the NO3, that's gonna go away. So we can write this as copper solid plus Ag plus aqueous goes to Ag solid plus copper two plus aqueous. And at this point, you're probably looking at the above reaction and saying, well, I, I think I know what the answer is going to be. The answer is probably going to be to put a 2 in front of the silver because that's going to balance out the nitrate. And you'd actually be right. But unfortunately on the exam, you can't just do that. You're going to have to do all of the following steps. So don't fall into the trap when we ask you to balance a redox reaction of just balancing it by mass. Make sure that you balance it in the following way so that you account for the charge also. That's a warning, and I can show you kind of why that's going to be the case. Normally, when we do these balancing reactions, we're going to tell you something like write the half reactions and then balance from the half reactions so that you really have no choice. Um, but it's really important that you understand that you have to go through this process because if you just balance it by mass, you may not necessarily be taking care of the charge. Okay, so then step two is to assign oxidation numbers. Uh, so we're going to do that, and in this case, we can do that fairly easily. So I'm going to do that right here above. So for the copper, we're going from copper 0 to copper 2 plus. So we're going to identify this one as the species being oxidized, and it's being oxidized by two electrons. And the silver is going from silver plus 1 to silver 0. So this is being reduced by one electron. And there in lies the crux of the issue. You'll notice that one species is being oxidized by two electrons, but the, only is be the other one is only being reduced by one electron. So that should indicate to you when you write these that something is not in balance. Okay, so now the next step, so step three, is to write the half reactions. And we're going to follow our process from the, the last uh, video. So for the oxidation and the reduction, so for the oxidation in this case, we're going from copper solid to copper two plus aqueous. And for the silver, the silver case, the reduction, we're going from silver plus aqueous to silver solid. Now we have to write in our electrons. So up here, we're gonna write two electrons. This one's giving up two electrons. And this one's giving up one, this one's gaining one electron. And those are our half reactions. So you'll, you can see from the half reactions that they're not balanced. And that's okay at this stage. So for step three, these are the correct half reactions, even though there's a different number of electrons. And I'm going to show you how we actually go through the process of balancing in the next step. So in step four, now we're going to balance the electrons. And this means that the number lost has to equal the number gained. So the way that you can denote this is to look at the, the numbers. So there's two electrons on top and one electron on the bottom. So the way that you can denote this is you can put a nice parenthesis around the silver and then put a two. 
and then what this is going to equal, and if you duplicate this on your exam, the, exactly the way I'm doing it, that's the best thing, because then we know exactly what you're doing, um, and then, th then we know. So this is what we ask that you do when you work these things out. And then this is gonna equal two electrons plus two silver plus gives two silver solid. Now remember, this is your half reaction, and then this is just helping us to balance everything. So now the final step, step five, is we balance the reaction. So we know from our step four that we have to multiply all the silvers by two. So when we balance the reaction, we're gonna write copper solid plus two silver nitrate goes to uh, copper nitrate plus two silver solid. This, the last step is to always double check to make sure that everything works correctly. So at this stage, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your mass also balances. If you did it right, your, your charge will balance and your mass will balance, and then you'll be good to go. So let's take a look at an example. Lecture problem one shows uh, a, another case where we can balance a simple redox reaction, but this one is a little bit more challenging to see right off the bat, although it's not any harder. It's the same exact difficulty level, but the only difference here is that uh, unlike the previous example, which was a displacement reaction, this is now a combination reaction. And what a combination reaction is, you take two reactants, you put them together, and um, it makes a product. So how do we handle this in terms of writing the reduction half reactions? We're going to follow our same procedure. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to write the net ionic reaction. Well, in this particular instance, we can't write the net ionic reaction. Um, there is nothing to change. There are no spectator ions. Everything participates in the reaction. So we have to remember that inside of the NaCl, this is a lattice, and it has a combination of the Na plus ion and the Cl minus ion. So when we write out this reaction, even though the NaCl is together, we can link the Na plus with the Na, and we can link the Cl minus with the Cl. So that's the trick with these combination reactions, is to recognize that the ionic compound contains ions from, of both Na and Cl. So you can see that the Na lost one electron and was oxidized, and the chloride gains an electron and is reduced. And we, we, we discussed that at the beginning of when we talked about ionic compounds. We said that when we make an ionic compound, there's an electron transfer, and that's what makes the Na plus and the Cl minus. So let's start writing our half reactions. So we have Na solid goes to Na plus. And you can actually write solid if you want, because remember, this Na plus is in the solid NaCl. So you could put solid there if you want. And for our other one, we have Cl2 goes to Cl minus solid, and this is Cl2 gas. So let's go about the process of balancing these things. So the Na and the Na plus, this is gonna give us one electron on the right. Now for the chlorine, we have to do two things. So in this case, we have to first, we have to, we have to balance the chlorine on the left and the right side. We can't just put charge because we have Cl2 on the left and we have Cl minus on the right. So step one here is we gotta make sure that we balance the atoms first and then we can handle charge. So now if we look, on the right side we have two minus charges and on the left side we have zero charge. So we have to write two electrons on the left side to get that to balance. And that makes sense because we know that the chlorine is gaining electrons or is being reduced. So that's how you write the half reaction for the, the chlorine. So now if we wanna balance this entire thing out, um, now that we have our half reactions, the next step, step four, is to balance out the number of electrons. So we have to put a two in front of the Na, and this is gonna give us two Na solid goes to two Na plus plus two electrons. So now when we balance the reaction, we're gonna have two Na, we have to double everything that's an Na, plus Cl2 gas gives two NaCl. And we've got it, solid. And now we've got it. So we've shown our half reactions, we've balanced the electrons, and now we can write our balanced reaction. And you should always double check to make sure that the mass is right. So we have two Na on the left, we have two Na on the right. We have two Cl on the left, and we have two Cl on the right. So everything checks out. Our charge is balanced and our mass is balanced. So that shows you the two primary examples of how to balance a simple redox reaction.